Hello everybody, AJ Ryzik here, and today we're taking a look at Bella OS version 2.2. Now, I had never heard of this distribution until I saw uh, a little blurb about it on uh, DistroWatch over the weekend, so downloaded it, installed it, and been playing around with it a little bit. Thought it looked kind of interesting, and, and what we've got here is we've got um, basically a... Uh, a tweaked out version of Zubuntu 14.04. Uh, so of course we got the Ubuntu 14.04 base, um, we've got XFCE for our desktop environment, but they have done a lot of the tweaking that I would do myself if I was setting this up to be you know my own desktop environment. Probably the one place where I differ from them is they have added a dock down here across the bottom, which they are using Plank, which is an excellent dock. Uh, I'm just not much of a dock kind of person. Uh, you know, personally, myself, I would have added a keyboard launcher, uh, maybe Synapse or Gnome do one of those. Um, but, uh, you know, to each his own. And, uh, and for the people that do like docs, Plank is a great application to run with. Myself, I would go, if I was going to use the dock, I, at least to me, the uh, the way the dock is set up now, it's using up a lot of space. So I would come on here and shrink down the icon size, I don't know, maybe 36. Yeah, something more along lines of that like that I don't, you know each each his own like I said um, keeping across the bottom not not a bad idea uh, I would also go to here in behavior do the hide dock option click it on and I think auto hide is what we want yeah if you do auto hide then your application will still fill the entire screen but when you move your mouse down to the bottom of the screen, your dock will pop up. That you know kind of maximizes your uh, your uh, your space here. So you know when you go and you click open a window, you can fill up the entire space, and then but you still have access to your dock because if you don't do that, let's go and go back to uh, we'll turn the hide dock off. So now. You know, you see, you, you end up with all this dead space on the bottom. Um, IntelliHide is another option for hiding the dock as well. As you can see, we've got some pretty neat looking wallpapers, a little space theming there. Uh, and there are not a huge number of, uh, let me go and open up desktop settings here, not a whole lot of uh, backgrounds, but they've got a few added for you. Um, you know, if you're into space, the, the space theme, um, a lot of these you'll like. If you're not, well, it's a good time to go and upload some uh, some backgrounds. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, you know, like I said, we are on a Zubuntu 14.04 base. It has been updated to the 14.04.2. Um, or O2, I think it's, is it O2? Yeah, I think it's O2. One thing that did disappoint me just a little bit was that they have not upgraded to uh, XFCE version 4.12, we're still on 4.11. Now 4.11's not bad, it's been around for a while, it's got about two years of, of, uh, of um, you know, use behind it, so, you know, it's stable, it, you know, all the bugs have been worked out, so it's no problem from from that standpoint, but it would be nice to have the latest uh, XFCE version here. Um, and it, upgrading is no more than adding a PPA and doing an upgrade. And I did a video on that, on how to do that with Zubuntu 14.04. Same thing will work here, so I'll throw a link down in the video description if you want to use this OS and would like to do that upgrade. Real easy to do. Um, and get you, you know, all the latest goodies for uh, for uh, XFCE. Taking a look at our applications, they have added a lot of the stuff that I would add myself. Uh, we still got Thunderbird for our mail reader. Web browser is still Firefox. Um, Thunar, 
we still have that as the you know the default file manager so all that's still the same pigeon internet messenger while ubuntu software center is included they have added synaptic package manager uh, which is you know by far my preferred method for installing software on uh, any debian based distribution uh, let's see where where was that they got a whole bunch of games um, I'm not real familiar with a lot of them so um, I'm not really going to go into the details because I'm not a huge gamer um, down here under graphics we do have GIMP we've got library office draw uh, our image viewer we've got Shotwell for, for photos uh, of course our document viewer um, coming down to internet of course, we already talked about Firefox, Pigeon, and Thunderbird. We've also got Transmission. We've got an IRC client. We've got FileZilla. So scrolling down to multimedia, here's something that I ran into. It didn't quite make a lot of sense. All right, so they added VLC Music Player, which I totally get. VLC will play anything you throw at it. Okay, so that makes sense. But why did they keep Parole Media Player, which is the default media player, and Ubuntu. I, I didn't quite get that. Just like they had with Brazero disk burning, but also kept XF burn. Uh, I, I was, you know, I totally get adding the other applications, but why didn't you get rid of, you know, the the one that you replaced? The, you know, that didn't quite make sense to me. Um, we got Banshee for our media player. Excellent media player. Uh, although I would my you know, and this is just a personal thing. If I'm going to go and add a a music player, my pick would be Clementine. Um, I think it's got it's the most versatile, got the most plugins available. Uh, although Banshee is a little bit lighter, so maybe that was that was their thinking. Not that Banshee Banshee is not a bad player. It, it's good. It just doesn't have quite as much functionality as Clementine. Coming down here to the office section they added the entire lever office suite which you know I'm I would do that myself uh, of course the the document viewer is still listed our dictionary application the calendar um, and the global time which are default for XFCE coming down here to settings of course we've got all of our usual um, uh, Zubuntu settings XFCE settings that sort of thing um, couple of things to point out here one we do have uh, a firewall added very nice they have added G parted good idea um, another one and this kind of goes back to what I was saying about the media players um, they added G edit uh, but we still have um, I believe yeah mouse pad is still installed um, you know, I don't see the need for two different text editors. So, the theming that they've done here, um, you know, got no complaints about it. Of course, we already talked about the uh, the background images; those are nice, especially if you like a space background. Um, kind of looking at their other settings here, um, running with the uh, the Orion um, uh, window style pretty nice style personally now and this kind of comes into the the XFCE 12 uh, 4.12 thing XFCE 4.12 they've got a new default theming that is very similar to um, to the Edweta that you see in GNOME 3 except it's kind of slimmed down you have uh, if you're familiar with the Edweta theme it you know very thick um, uh, uh, top bar to your windows that it's very it's much more slimmed down but it has the same basic styling I really like the appearance of that um, personally I would have I would have gone with that but I mean what they got here isn't bad and of course you know to each his own on the uh, on the styling there everybody's going to be different in what they like icon theme I really like the the Vanza icon so you know no issues with that and they're sticking with the uh, droid sans uh, uh, font which is um, while it's not really fancy or anything like that is it is very readable and it is uh, you know it was designed as a web font so that it is readable 
uh, whether you're looking at it uh, in small image or large you know it, it, it remains uh, very readable so from that standpoint it's a good font to go with uh, one thing I would have changed here is um, oh well not as much that actually what I was I was just thinking about was the desktop um, going here to the desktop settings the one thing that I would change I like a clean desktop so I get rid of all that I, I you know I don't want anything to click on my uh, on my desktop uh, as far as I'm concerned that went out with Windows XP well, let's take a look at what they've done with the top bar we have a quick launch for our settings right there and then we have a quick launch for an appli our application finder right here of course our date and time um, our sound along with the uh, the plugin extension so that we can control uh, uh, both of both the VLC and Banshee from here um, of course our internet connections and this right here is just our running application which I'm running uh, uh, my simple screen recorder it gives you a quick launch uh, for um, pausing and and recording a simple screen recorder from there and then they also have a quick launch for your note-taking application so you got quick access to that and then of course our drop-down menu right over here so they've done a little bit of tweaking to the top menu um, and once again I might have done it a little bit differently but how they have done it it definitely adds some functionality to that top bar and that being said I think that is about it for this review I know it's not a real long one but you know it's based on Zubuntu 14.04 and you know a, uh, it's not a lot of huge changes it's kind of like uh, and I've talked about this in a couple of my other reviews it's that last you know little five or ten percent uh, that little extra tweaking that will add that extra functionality to a desktop environment you know anybody could go and pick up uh, Zubuntu 14.04 and do exactly what the Bella team has done here um, but you know this is such a huge time saver that you could go pop in uh, you know your USB or DVD install this on your system and boom it's ready to go whereas you know if I was going to use Ubuntu 14.04 I would I would for the most part do what they've done here um, but it would take me a while to get there so you know it is a big time saver in that in that sense um, and I think this would be a great distribution for somebody just getting started in Linux because everything is ready to go out of the box form. Uh, it would also be great for, and, and I know I'm not the only person that's in this situation, uh, where you are the Linux guru for the household and you're setting up the desktop for you know, everybody else's computers in the house, your wife, your kids, your, you know, uh, uh, you know whoever and you don't want to screw around with it a lot you basically want to install it on their desktop and maybe every now and then you got to go and do the updates for them um, but you know very low maintenance desktop ready to go out of the box but has plenty of functionality added in so very nice on that so uh, give us a big old thumbs up down below if you enjoyed the video comments questions all that kind of stuff as always is welcome and just put that down below as well and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can and uh, if you are not a subscriber please subscribe and I will see you on the next video thanks a lot